This week, Chief Justice of the United States William Rehnquist at the opening of the Robert H. Jackson Center in Jamestown, New York. Robert H. Jackson Center family. Robert H. Jackson Center. Here at the Robert Jackson Center. The Robert H. Jackson Center. And of the Robert H. Jackson Center. The Robert H. Jackson Center. I think the center has um, an evergreen quality. We're a young nonprofit, only 20 years old, and yet we've done so many things. And so we had the benefit of being able to introduce the public to the man, as well as his professional legacy. The importance of giving the Jackson Center deep roots in this community, because that is part of what would help us expand our wings and fly. The Robert H. Jackson Center, the work we have done and the work left to do. The Robert H. Jackson Center was founded by Gregory Peterson, James Selmoyer, Elizabeth Linnae, community volunteer and philanthropist. And Carl Kappa, humanitarian and community coordinator. Greg Peterson, inspired by the dedication of the Robert H. Jackson statue in Jamestown in 1996, and the relatively unknown status of Jackson as a hometown hero, conceived of the idea of the center. His idea was actualized in the purchase of the Kent Mansion in 2001. The mission of the Robert H. Jackson Center is to advance public awareness and appreciation of the principles of justice and the rule of law as embodied in the achievements and legacy of Robert H. Jackson. The Jackson Center envisions a global society where the universal principles of equality, fairness, and justice prevail. The Robert H. Jackson Center was officially dedicated on May 16, 2003. The main speech was delivered by Chief Justice William Rehnquist, the 16th Chief Justice of the United States and a former law clerk of Robert H. Jackson himself. Over the last 20 years, the Jackson Center has had the honor of hosting dozens of exhibits. Some of our favorites include Say I Taught Thee, a tribute to Mary Willard, Jackson's influential high school English teacher. A Loaded Weapon, an exhibit examining the experiences of Japanese American internment during World War II. And my personal favorite exhibit, a series of photographs by Ray Diderio, displaying the legal minds, defendants, and witnesses of the Nuremberg Trials. In 2015, the Robert H. Jackson Center facilitated the recordings of 250 local men and women who served in World War II in the Korean War. The Defenders of Freedom exhibit shares the stories and memories of these brave men and women. Started by Greg Peterson, Robert H. Jackson Center founder and board member, and Phil Zimmer, local author and historian, the project not only documents places, dates, facts, and battles, but also how such events influence these individuals' lives. Leading with Integrity and Innovation, a tribute to Stan Lundeen, is an exhibit memorializing Stan Lundeen, Mayor of Jamestown, Congressional Representative from New York, Lieutenant Governor under Mario Cuomo, and hometown hero. This exhibit, installed in 2019, honors Stan Lundeen and his ability to lead with integrity and innovation. The Jackson Center has hosted several key individuals from Jackson's most influential Supreme Court cases. These individuals have spoken on their widespread impact of Justice Jackson's decisions and how their lives were altered by his dedication to justice, fairness, and equality. To the radio. At 12.52 p.m., the announcement came. The court's decision on ending segregation was unanimous. Speakers who have visited the center include Linda Brown of Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka in 2004, Marie Barnett of West Virginia v. Barnett in 2018, and Fred Korematsu of Korematsu v. United States in 2002, as well as his daughter Karen Korematsu in 2013 and 2019. Fun side note, we have a signed baseball from one Fred Korematsu. The Jackson Center has had a significant role in the international humanitarian law dialogues. Historic gatherings of former and current war tribunal prosecutors, as well as keynote speakers and presenters. These conferences culminate in the issuing of a Chautauqua Declaration, which calls on all nations to pursue justice as a matter of law. 
During the International Humanitarian Law Dialogues, the Jackson Center honors an individual with the Joshua Heinz Award for Humanitarian Achievement. This award is presented to an individual who demonstrates compassion, vision, and dedication in pursuit of international humanitarian justice. Previous winners include Sergei Magnitsky in 2015. Magnitsky was an auditor and lawyer who, after uncovering a large-scale Russian tax fraud corruption scheme as part of Hermitage Capital, died in Russian prison after being mistreated. His work influenced the creation of the Magnitsky Bill in the United States, which applied sanctions on the 18 Russian officials directly connected to Magnitsky's mistreatment and death. The Joshua Heinz Award not only honors such individuals as Magnitsky that advance international law, but also encourages others to create the change they wish to see in the world. Building on the Jackson Center's international connections and outreach, over the last two decades, the Jackson Center has had the honor of hosting numerous international prosecutors. Fatou Bensouda spoke at the 2016 International Humanitarian Law Dialogues held in Nuremberg in honor of the 70th anniversary of the International Military Tribunal. The keynote speaker spoke powerfully about the arc of justice's continual bend towards accountability and the shared responsibility that people and states around the world have to address war crimes and atrocities. Whitney Harris was the last surviving prosecutor who appeared in front of the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg. He was a principal trusted aide to U.S. Chief Prosecutor Jackson and assisted him throughout the tribunal, including during his cross-examination of defendant Herman Goring. In the fourth annual Humanitarian Dialogue, the first annual Joshua Heinz Award for Humanitarian Achievement was awarded to Whitney Harris's beloved wife, Anna, in honor of her husband's legacy. This was the tragic fulfillment of a program of intolerance and arrogance. Vengeance is not our goal, nor do we seek merely a just retribution. Benjamin B. Ferenc was an investigator of Nazi war crimes after World War II and the chief prosecutor for the United States Army at the Einsatzgruppen trial, one of the 12 military trials held by U.S. authorities at Nuremberg, Germany. Mr. Ferenc joined the Robert H. Jackson Center in providing a welcome address to the prosecutors and attendees of the 9th Annual International Humanitarian Law Dialogues. Additionally, Benjamin Ferenc was a Robert H. Jackson Gala honorate, opening the first ever virtual gala in 2020. David Crane was the first American chief prosecutor in an international war crimes tribunal since Robert H. Jackson. Crane, former chief prosecutor of the Special Court for Sierra Leone, indicted and later convicted Charles Taylor, the president of Liberia. In 2018, Greg Peterson conducted an interview with David Crane, discussing the precedents he created regarding international war crime tribunals. The Robert H. Jackson Center has created several programs, both to advance the goals of the center and to spread the legacy of Justice Jackson. The Robert H. Jackson Center started an internship program in 2012 with a partnership with Allegheny College. The program now brings the best and the brightest students from across the country to work at the center. The internship program gives young scholars a chance to explore their interests in law, international justice, and of course, the legacy of Justice Robert H. Jackson. The Teacher Fellows Program is another initiative aimed at increasing knowledge of Jackson and the principles of fairness, equality, and justice he advocated for. This program brings several teachers from across the nation to the Jackson Center to learn all about Jackson and develop lesson plans to bring Jackson back to the classrooms. Living Voices is a collaboration between the Jackson Center and TheaterWorks USA, bringing history to life for students from elementary through high school levels. Living Voices has focused on topics such as immigration, the Holocaust, and civil rights. Young Readers is an initiative to connect students to their favorite books. The Jackson Center brings in various authors of historically based novels to speak to students about what they have read, relating struggles of the past to students today. In December of 2019, the Robert H. Jackson Center partnered with Jamestown Public Schools to launch Civic Sparks, a program aimed to increase civic engagement in youth and raise the next generation of empowered civic leaders.
In February of 2020, the Robert H. Jackson Center hosted Jamestown High School and Success Academy students, where they collaborated to brainstorm solutions to various issues facing the Jamestown community. Civic Sparks was put on hold due to the COVID-19 pandemic, although there are plans to revive the program. The Jackson Center also features several lecture series. The Alan Marge Brown Lecture Series brings in two authors to the center to discuss their books on World War II related topics. And they were singing songs like, um, this little light of mine. Come on, help me out, guys. I'm the American Board of Trial Advocates, known as ABODA, also partners with the Jackson Center to host the James Otis Lecture Series. These lectures, designed to expose Buffalo, New York students to the operations of the court, take place at the Robert H. Jackson Courthouse in Buffalo. A featured speaker was Mary Beth Tinker from the Tinker vs. Des Moines case. The James Otis Lecture Series won the Liberty Bell Award from the Bar Association of Erie County in 2019. The annual Alan Y. Cole Lecture Series honors Mr. Cole, a World War II veteran and law clerk to Justice Jackson. The 2017 Alan Y. Cole Lecture featured Professor of Law at St. John's University, John Barrett. In his talk, Barrett emphasized the complexities of immigration, security, power, and law through a Jacksonian lens. John Barrett is also the Robert H. Jackson Center's Elizabeth S. Linnae Fellow. The Robert H. Jackson Lecture is the Center's premier lecture series at Chautauqua Institution. The Jackson Lecture brings a prominent U.S. Supreme Court expert to the institution to offer their perspective on the court, the justices, and other key legal topics. Building on our community engagement and outreach, the Center has collaborated with several organizations to further spread Jackson's influence. In recent years, the Jackson Center has partnered with the National Comedy Center for a roundtable discussion on comedy in the First Amendment, how far is too far and who decides, with the Chautauqua Institution to host David M. Crane and Brian Rooney as part of their Heritage Lecture Series, and with the Reg Lene to host the national stage production of Judgment at Nuremberg, a live radio drama performed by LA Theatre Works. The Robert H. Jackson Center has also signed memorandums of understanding with several colleges and organizations, agreeing to share resources and research to further understand and spread Jackson's legacy. The Mercyhurst University Memorandum of Understanding was specifically signed to share resources and research on the Homestead Project, which is an archaeological and historical survey of the homestead of Robert H. Jackson in Spring Creek, Pennsylvania. The question. Were you there when the old dam was torn down? To support our programming, the Center has held a variety of fundraisers. Some highlights include benefit concerts by Mark Russell, a renowned political satirist and comedian native to Western New York. Phil Donahue, television personality and host of The Phil Donahue Show, presented a dinner with Donahue to benefit the Center in 2014. Other noteworthy visitors have included Sammy Tay, an internationally acclaimed musician and humanitarian, and Bob Woodward, Pulitzer Prize winning author and investigative journalist. The 10th anniversary of the Jackson Center in 2011 specifically honored Jackson's role in the historic Brown vs. Board of Education decision. Chief Justice John Roberts spoke at this event on Justice Jackson and his influence on civil rights law through his actions on the Supreme Court. saw the creation of the documentary, Liberty Under Law, the Robert H. Jackson story. Through the life of Jackson, Liberty Under Law explores the underpinnings of government, the reaches of presidential power, the tenuous balance between civil liberties and national security, and the global application of international criminal law. The 15th year anniversary of the Robert H. Jackson Center, celebrated in 2016, saw the Jackson Center statue move from the local school in Jamestown to in front of the Jackson Center. The eight foot tall bronze statue 
sculpted by Dexter Benedict, was dedicated outside of Love School in 1996 before finding its home at the Jackson Center. The 20th year anniversary of the Jackson Center has seen the developments of many new projects and initiatives designed to further spread the message of the Jackson Center in an increasingly changing world. The Jackson Center has gone virtual, President Kristen McMahon hosting virtual tea times at the Jackson Center. During these events, McMahon speaks with many community leaders, advocates, and experts from across the world on pressing issues relating to human rights, civics, and international policy. The Jackson Center has also created a podcast, Liberty Under Law, hosted by Kristen McMahon that explores contemporary issues of equality, fairness, and justice with a Jacksonian lens. But now we're gonna focus on our wings and we are working on partnerships with other organizations such as the Truman Presidential Library, deeper partnerships with Chautauqua Institution and other organizations around the country and around the world to bring our programming, our expertise, and our information out to the widest population possible. I hope that the Jackson Center, Center continues forever. I think its impact is going to be relevant for a long, long time in an educational sense and that the, um, the part that most people know about the Nuremberg trials uh, is going to be an essential thing down in his, uh, as history continues because it was the first and the fact that they laid the ground rules for how to conduct an international trial will always be important. We're expanding quite literally our building and our facilities so that we can take advantage of the memorandum of understanding that we have with colleges and universities. So the Jackson Center will become the intellectual hub that really reflects the full impact of Jackson's national and international influence. In the world, and as long as we have injustices in the world, Robert H. Jackson is always going to matter. As we both look to our future and reflect on our successes over the past two decades, we would like to thank our supporters. Thank you for your passion and engagement with the Center. This work could not be done without you. We truly appreciate your contributions and care in keeping alive Robert H. Jackson's legacy through our work both today and tomorrow.